Hi, everybody. Welcome to Am I the Asshole Podcast. I'm Danny Vega, joined by my lovable co-host, Sarah. Sarah, how are you today? I am good. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm better now. I mean, I was fine. It's just been moody. The weather's been moody. It was, like, really amazing, and I was like... Oh, it's summer. We're in it. It's spring. It's summer. There's rabbits running in the fields. And and now it's back to dreary winter vibes. And I'm like, ugh. Okay, yeah. What the hell is that? Um, I checked my weather app. And last weekend, it was like literally spring. Yeah. Slash, dare I say, almost 70 degrees. And this week, there's a not insignificant chance of snow. It was like low key, lightly snowing yesterday. I was like, what is this bullshit? It was summer. It was literally summer. Stop. Stop uh, yeah, manipulating but, us. But then I'm like, okay, I can't be surprised because um, this happens every year in March, <laughs> like every single year. Yeah. There's always like a period where it gets nice and we think it's spring and then it's like, nope, just kidding. We're going to blizzard. Fake out. Psych. <clears throat> March. Big fake outs. Quit it. Mar- that's why it's called March Madness because March is insane. Speaking of insanity, uh, <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> Sarah has received a few DMs. I just want to clarify what's going on with the podcast. First of all, nothing is going away. Sarah and I will continue to do episodes every single week that will come out Monday. That's not changing. If you want an additional Danny and Sarah episode, you can get that in our Patreon. Patreon.com slash AITA pod. These other episodes that I'm adding, you'll notice each episode starts with the letters XT, which is short for extra. And that means that. Oh, my it's God. I not, would not have deduced that. Yeah. Well, I was going to write out what extra, but it takes what if all you these. Just call it bonus. Because it takes so many characters, and I just want it to be <laughs> short and tight. Okay. And I was like, people will put it together. They're smart. So. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like every single day in the group, we have people being like, what's NTA mean? And it's like, <laughs> why are you here if you don't know the acronyms? <laughs> But yeah, suffice to say, Sarah will be doing some of the guest episodes, but probably not most because she's busy. I have nothing to do. I I have nothing to do. So I'm meeting with all these people and producing these extra episodes. But you don't need to be concerned. Sarah is here to stay. It's just just me just doing extra stuff to to hopefully bring attention to the podcast. By the way, we love to get a guest request. Uh, If you have someone that you uh, would recommend for the podcast who is like an entertainer, not like a rando. Uh, or well, <laughs> someone Except who, for Danny's dad. Well, yeah, my dad has been requested and I will, well, he's a psychologist. He, I think he has some proper. Okay. The thing is like, I want to be on that episode, but mostly just to like moderate. We actually started recording it and it was a technical nightmare. At one point, <laughs> at one point, my dad was just like, I can't find you. I can't find you. I can't find, find you. you. What do you <laughs> mean? He couldn't find the window. What does that mean, Dad? He couldn't find like the Zoom window and was freaking out. It was horrible. Wait, that's so funny. Oh god. So I don't know. We re- <laughs> we recorded like twenty minutes of it, and then he couldn't figure out how to send the file. And I was like, I don't. We're just gonna do this in person. This is a nightmare. I can't stand yeah, this. That seems fair. That's um, too funny. You know what though? I actually do have some juice for you. I um, this is really weird. So. Oh boy. I- I get a text one afternoon from an old friend and we had had a, uh, we'd had a zoom call. I don't know, three to five months ago, a while ago. And he goes, Hey, I noticed on that zoom call, you seemed a little upset with me. Hmm. Uh, if there's any kind of grievances you want to air, or you got something to say, I'm, you know, I'm here to listen kind of like that basically. And, and I was like, well, yeah, I, I do have a few things to say if you're kind of wondering what my vibe was about. Oh, um, but I, I felt very judicious going in. I was like, you know, let me just what's because what's going on with this guy that that's his approach. So I go, what's your intent here, man? Are you are you know, are you hurting? Like, are you looking for someone to hang with? Like, what what's going on with you? Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, I really I really want to know. I really want to know what's going on. And I said, well, basically, you always nag me, oh. um, which is fine. Which I could take a little, a little bit of roasting among bros, but I go, you only roast a broast, me, if you will, a roast, and I can handle a <laughs> roast. But I was like, you only roast me, and you aren't positive toward me ever. So that makes oh, what me the hell think. Is that? 
Yeah, I was like, that makes me think you don't really like me. And, uh, you know, uh, whatever. I don't uh, fuck you. You know, I was like, and I don't dislike you, but you're not really like a homie. You're just kind of like, uh, you know, I'm on fine terms with you. But like, yeah, you're not really like someone I look forward to seeing. I guess, <laughs> I guess you're kind of neutral. Whoa. But, no, so I kind of I kind of said that. And he was like, OK, I get it. I'll tone down the roasting. And I was like, cool. And by the way. The same to you. I don't, you know, I got no problem with you. I just, you know, I, I just feel no need to be negative uh, to be too roasty when we don't hang out. You know what I mean? Like you can roast someone if you hang out. Wait, so, then so he, he has the same issue with you? No, he didn't. He didn't. But I was just saying that because I wanted to cover my bases and be like, do you have any oh. issues with me? So then he goes, gotcha, Any, gotcha. Okay. anything else? Anything else? And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, we do have a big breach that happened with us. And he's like, really? What? And I was like, oh, you don't remember. Oh, and boy. Basically what had happened, this was years ago, I was like, I told you a secret and I told you not to tell the person who it was about and you told them. Oh and, my God, come on. And he goes, that's uh, not what I remember happening. And uh, he said it was just a miscommunication. And I said, okay, well you remember it as a miscommunication and I remember it as you breaking my trust. And he goes, well, mm -hmm. I'm sorry I made you feel that way. And I was like, okay, that's kind of like a half apology because you're not, you're sort of skirting around the fact you're kind of implying that uh, what I thought happened didn't happen. And he goes, I never said that. And I was like, okay, but you're not going to acknowledge that you did that. You're just going to say you're sorry that I feel that you did that. And That's he was, bogus. And he was like, yes. And I was what? like, I was like, all right, so let me be clear. You called to clear the air. I told you what was clogging up the air. You said that you didn't remember it that way. And so basically we just broke even. We had this like emotional call and then nothing changed emotionally. And I was like, what the fuck was this? Why don't we go on this roller coaster, you motherfucker? I mean, damn, it's like he wanted the heat, but then couldn't like handle it um so yeah. like are you guys friends anymore well i I, ed I wrapped us up on a good note i was like cool man like if you if you're not willing to apologize in that way that's fine like we will just leave off where we were where it's like you're kind of like a casual friend of mine i gladly work with you i got no problem with you uh you know it's like shit's chill like you're never gonna be close to me now with a breach like that hanging over us that you won't even acknowledge, but that's no problem. I mean, like, what the fuck? I mean, okay, well, I'm being nosy now. I'll ask you for specifics later, but this seems like a pretty objective thing. It's not like, oh, hey, you said X about me, and he was like, oh, what I actually, I meant it like this, but I'm sorry it was taken like that. It's like, did you tell them or didn't you? He, yeah, he acknowledged that he told them, but then just boiled it down to a miscommunication. Oh, and then I thought this was a good argument. I was like, I was trying to see his side. I was like, all right, dude. So like you remember it as a miscommunication. And because of that, it probably wasn't very important to you because who the fuck yes. remembers a miscommunication? Who gives a shit? Facts. I remember it as something much more important, a breach of trust. That's kind of something you remember. So maybe you should kind of defer to my memory since like, that shit was heavy with me. It had more of an effect on my life than it did on yours. And he was just like, I don't remember it that way. And I was like, okay, all right. That's, that's the way I, you want to go with this. I feel like that's how that kind of works. You know, like, okay. I just, wow. I'm slightly speechless by this. That's how like hurt feelings usually work. Right. Like, it's usually like you hurt someone unintentionally and never think about it. And then they think about it all the time. Like that's, that's how it goes. Yeah, I need to look up this tweet author, but there's that great tweet. I, I put it on the Facebook group, but it was like, uh, you know, quit quit thinking about that thing you said yep. that you think is upsetting people. It wasn't that thing that's upsetting anyone. It's something else that you didn't even clock. Oh, Ooh, yes. It's so I true. I knew exactly which tweet you were talking it's about. It's so and true. It's so true. But yeah, I mean, it was interesting. Well, I like that. I like that you're with me on this, and, and it made me think about the nature of apologizing and also like... When you get into this very like facts based approach, it's like you kind of really miss the mark because it's like, well, you remember one thing. I remember another thing. You know, it's like, why? Why is your memory so strict that both both he kind of said both things could be true. So I was like, well, then why can't you just apologize for Yeah, like, both things could be true. But like one of us is hurt by it. So what's the big deal? Right. Of, like, genuinely apologizing and not doing like a bullshit ass. I'm sorry if you felt 
Real Housewives shit. Right, because I realize, like, I'm sorry you felt isn't necessarily wrong. It's not it's an just, apology. Exactly. It's well, it's a it's, fake apology. It well, it can be the beginning of an apology. It's just you do actually. It's like you're carefully getting away from taking responsibility. That's when I'm sorry you felt is dirty. You know, because yeah. if if you're saying like I'm sorry you felt X Y Z, but you go I'm sorry you felt X, and I'm sorry I did Y. And That's it's it. like why did you feel X? Because I did X. Yes. Or I did Y. Yes. Yes. You're right. I'm sorry I did. Those are the key words. I think those are key in, a, in an apology. Yeah. So that's well, that my, sucks. I mean, honestly, it was uh, it was kind of like it was like this emotional kind of roller coaster. But when I was done with it, I was like, damn, I actually am like proud of myself because like, you know, he was being vulnerable and I, and I got to give him credit for that. And he was being open and he was curious. He wasn't willing to go all the way with me. But like, ultimately, I was like kind of proud of myself for how I handled it, where I was like, what are you here for? Because you know what? Had he said because it's not like I got bad blood with this guy, you know, I was like, there's just a level of trust that I'm not going to give you. If, you know, if he had said, honestly, Danny, I'm in a really hurt place. I'm in a bad place of coronavirus. I'd be like, oh, dude, like, let's, you know, let's have a Zoom or whatever. Like, let's chill if that's where you're at. So I don't know. I, I guess I kind of felt good about myself trying to gauge his intent. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll give myself a cookie. I've been having less cookies. Maybe I, I deserve. Oh my a, god, a I've been having cookie. so many. <laughs> I bought these like chocolate covered pretzels from the grocery store. They're not even that good. I just keep eating them. Ah, uh, chocolate covered pretzels are so good. Speaking of the chocolate, chocolate is weird. Like that, I don't know how to explain it, but it just it doesn't. It tastes weird. I gotta call you on the carpet. Where's our okay. chocolate chip cookies? I thought we got an agreement. Yeah, I, uh, I just like keep forgetting to go to the grocery store. You had a crazy week. You had a crazy week. It can't be denied. So, Sarah, you are going to make the chocolate chip cookies posted as a review. Is that true? Yes, I will at some point. At some point, people. It's just like not on the forefront. Fair Let me enough. screenshot the recipe now. Fair enough. You got any juice for us? Are we ready to do? Oh, we got some guests, the verdict, people. But before we, we do, do that friendly reminder please rate review and subscribe we actually got a review i love let's pull up the reviews let's pull up the reviews this is the, <laughs> the one that just says this bomb is fire with 67 e's don't ruin it sarah I was gonna pull oh it my up. god it was that one i'm sorry you, you missed just edit it that out and do it again no we're i'm gonna just say the whole review the review is a five-star review the title of the review is Da Bomb. And then, as Sarah said, the con contents of the review are This Bomb is Fire. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> hey, by the way, we get, we're on this thing called Chartable. I don't know what this is, but I like this website. What is that? I don't know, but it sends me all the reviews we get, and then it sends me charts. And I love okay. it. Get this. Whatever. We're, we love a charge. Shout out to any South Koreans listening. We're apparently number 105 in South Korea. Shouts to oh, them. Yeah? 100, 179 in Norway. Shout out to Nor my Norwegians. Uh, 154 in Ireland. What's up, Ireland? Let's do this, baby. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means, but there we are. We're killing love it. love Ireland. Happy St. Patty's Day. There we go. So you got any juice for us before we do these GTVs? I'm trying to think. I mean, honestly, not really. Like, I haven't slept in so long. My oh boyfriend boy. was like, when was the last time you ha like slept normally? And I, was, I sent him that gif from, what's it called? Golden Girls. And I said, picture it, Sicily, 1912. Like, actually, I don't remember. <laughs> um, like, I, I'm sort of, like, not immune, but, like... I feel like I've built up a tolerance to the Xanax now. It's not great. I'm going to try Ambien tonight, I think. I am prescribed it, everyone, just so you know. Heavy stuff, Sarah. Heavy stuff. Oh, hey, whatever you got to do. Oh, now you're going to juice police me? No, no, I mean, I didn't mean, <laughs> no, I didn't mean like too heavy for the pot. I just meant like those are real, real ass sleepy drugs. That's it. I know. It sucks. Um, I don't want to be like this. Well, uh, whatever. I I'm just, ha I mean, I remember those days when you wouldn't sleep at all. So I'm happy you've got tools yeah. at your disposal. I haven't had one of those. I had one night literally where I, I straight up did not sleep at all. And then this was truly psychotic because I had to like go cover the jingle ball red carpet. So I wasn't home until like 11 at night. Uh -huh. And like it actually didn't feel as bad as I thought. Like, I don't know how, but I think just like adrenaline got me through. But I, I think what's actually worse is like the compounding effect 
of like two hours, four hours. Like that's worse than just one night of no straight sleep. Knock on wood. Whew. Well, I, uh, well, okay. I, I don't know if I agree. I, I'll, I'll say this. I had a night where I couldn't sleep the other day. And it's been rare for me. I was up till like two. I usually fall asleep before one. I was up till two. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to eat like a pig. And I had like two bowls of cereal at 2 a.m. And then I slept like a baby. <laughs> Wait, I love that. Yeah, because we talked about this. You do the like little spoonful of peanut butter. Yeah. If I can't sleep or like, oh, yeah. I don't know, sometimes yogurt. Oh, you were the one yeah. who told me to eat a cup of beans, and I was like, I don't think I want to do that, but, like, I will eat. That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. No, peanut butter is really good. All right. Let's do some guess the verdict. A- AITA for not sharing my son's investment account with my daughter. No. I mean, I would say not the asshole. Interesting. Well, you would be wrong. So God damn it. here's the story. It actually is very, very juicy. We, we might need to cover this. Husband was like a low-key kind of trader. He was kind of handling his son's stocks. Largely big funds, right? Not really going in for individual stocks. But he threw a couple in the individual stocks. Uh, he, you know, he, you could tell he was kind of interested in it, right? So he's kind of telling his wife, they're both kind of drinking. They're having wine on the beach or some shit. And wife is like, anybody. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody. <laughs> can, material. Yeah, anybody can trade stocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's like, well, I'll handle our daughter's account. <clears throat> so the wife bombs. The husband started with 16K and grew his son's account to 60K. Wait, so these people are just like having a pissing contest with their kids' investment accounts? That's what I don't really understand, okay? So <clears throat> wow, rich people shit, man. He okay. goes from 16K to 60K. She goes from 11K to 15K. So she basically pissed okay, the money Okay, that's still good in my eyes. No, I'm that's like, horrible. how is that bad? Oh, that's horrible. We're talking about over the course of like 10 years here. Oh. Um, so, they kept up this, what's another word for pissing contest, for 10 years? Yes, exactly. That's These what, people are so immature. It's like, why were you not on this, bro? Like, yeah, you can be on your wife about the fact that she had a bad year or two. Apparently, the wife did all individual stocks, which is not very advised, but... Anyway, we should cover this situation, but Sour Lemons Wait, writes, yeah. ESH, you want to teach your wife a lesson by making your daughter pay the price? Which makes no yeah. sense, right? So why would the daughter have a less of a college fund just because wife botched it? And what kind of lesson are you teaching your daughter? That she'll be straddled with 45K of extra debt because mom and dad made a drunken bet and are horrible about talking about finances? ESH. So I, I think that's very fair, mm, honestly. Yeah. They are both being yeah. kind of stupid. They're both being, like, so childish with the highest stakes. And wow. Another corollary, wow. I don't know if we talked about this, but, like, it's f- seriously fucked up, straight, like, clear abusive. Like, you never want to prioritize either of your kids. Like, what are you, crazy? Like, that's obviously not okay. <laughs> Does that need to be explained, that you can't pick favorites among your children, people? Yeah, what you know? the fuck? Like, uh, anyway, your turn. Um, okay, AITA for pretending my son's bike was stolen to teach him a lesson. Uh, I don't like this style of parenting. Uh, I'm just going to go for YTA. You would think that, and honestly, I thought that too, but the answer was NTA. So here's the deal. OP's son, who is nine, has a habit of just leaving his bike outside and not, I guess, in the yard and not putting it away. Uh, he did it again. And so instead of putting it away for him, OP threw it into his truck and pretended it was stolen only to magically find it later at the park. And then when the wife found out about this plan, she called him an asshole. Top verdict was, NTA, you didn't trash the bike. You didn't throw or give away the bike. You just let your son see the consequences of his action. Seemed like he learned his lesson. Yeah, I'm on board. I, I guess I thought it was going to play out differently. That's, that seems fine. That seems like an effective lesson. He had to feel kind of all these emotions and understand the stakes of it, too. Because, you know, it was like an impossibility to him. So it kind of made it like real and like, oh, shit, like I really don't want this to happen. Yeah, I guess I, I would almost maybe go NAH like if we wanted to delve deeper into it. Cause, like I don't think the wife is wrong for being like a little bit off put by that. But I don't think anything's wrong with the strategy. Yeah, it shouldn't be a first resort. Maybe like try to have a conversation with your child and explain it to them. But if he's not really I mean, he's nine. So it's kind of like you got to be concrete with these little punks. But yeah, yeah, I would say no assholes here. Yeah, same. AITA for not being more supportive to my wife after our son decided to change his name. No, not the asshole. And the wife is. Not the asshole is right. 
So okay. the son is named after the wife's dead father. Late father is the more polite way to put that. Uh, I never understood that. Late for what? They're not late for nothing. They're just gone now. They don't need to worry they're about it. They're late to, I guess they're late to everything because they're never showing up. All right, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> they're late to oh everything because they're you. never showing up. <laughs> uh, so here's the story I guess his father-in-law it's not explicit but it's pretty horrible it sounds like he he was found like basically it was like discovered that he sexually abused one of the children or something horrible oh it doesn't say that but it's kind of like uh, anyway son finds this out he's like yeah I don't want to be named after that guy <clears throat> Dad, yeah big time dad's like yeah I, I get you there and wife is like no you're named after the good things he did Little, Oof, it's her father. It's her father. So, Oof. you know, Oof. little, hard. by the way, great username here. Little freaky reaper writes NTA. Oh, no. If your father-in-law did that, did what I think he has, then your wife really needs to sit down and think if she truly wants her son to be named after a person like that, there are just some terrible things that can't be looked over and that some good deeds cannot undo. Yeah, that's rough though. That's rough. It's a hard thing to process. Like, I feel bad for the wife. Like, yeah, I mean, if this happened like 10 years ago, like if she found out 10 years ago and, the, and you know, the son just turned 18 or something, I don't know, then I would feel different. But it's like if they all just found this out together, I'd be like, yeah. OK, you need to, you know, let the woman process it. That's horrifying. Yeah, it's it's like I mean, look, the, the thing is, like, you know, that realization of like, oh, like, you know, your parents are people, too. It's like your parents are also someone else's kid. Yes. So it's like you got to you got to understand, like, that's some seriously fucked up shit for her. Like, and even though I do have my rules about putting the kid first in all situations, like she is a kid, too, especially in, in this kind of case where her dad is a piece of shit. Yeah, that sucks. It's tough. Toughy. Ugh, don't want to imagine that. Okay. Um, AITA for being upset. My wife didn't take care of me while I was drunk. Oh, yeah. I don't got no sympathy for drunk people. That shit pisses me off. I say, yeah, you are the asshole for being upset. I should have known that you would see through this because, yes. Um, Hell yeah. Because I, I do know that is your opinion. Okay. OP got blackout at a restaurant one night. Charmer. Mm -hmm. Real charmer. The wife got him home, put him in bed, and then, like, you know, played video games or something. Um, she didn't check on him. Later, he teased her about how he could have choked and died on his vomit. She said she wasn't responsible for him. The top verdict was, YTA, she got you home safe and to bed. She did take care of you. As an adult, you are responsible for yourself. You should know your own limits by now. And then, like, some other shit like that. And then they said, if you choked on your own vomit, it would have been your fault, and you probably would have traumatized her for life. Grow up. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Harsh, but. Well, it is harsh, but there's a blind spot in society. I'll, I'll go, I'll go on the record here and say, uh, for whatever reason, I, I, it's just because alcohol is so normalized, people are, are, are insane behavior. Insane behavior is considered acceptable. If you were any, if it was any other drug, if it was heroin and someone almost overdosed, which is exactly what happened in this story, would you really be like, wow, how could the wife just leave him? You know, it's just for some reason we go like alcohol's fine. Alcohol's cute. And it's like, no, dude, like you abuse a drug. You got fucked up and it's not her problem that you are unable to control yourself. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just I just think the person being like, well, if you had died, good, is like harsh. Well, no, of course not. I'm not saying he deserves but, to die. But yeah, I'm just I, saying like, like... As long as she um, like put him on his side, it's well, good. Yeah, but it's like, all right, you're fucked up, bro. Like you, you got fucked up on a drug. You know, and like I understand, it's normalized. That's the thing. I'm even, I'm even starting. No, to, I mean, I get do you it, understand but it's what just I'm saying? Like when you're dealing with it, you know, like you're obviously gonna want to try to make sure that person doesn't die. No, well, of course, That's of it. course. It's not like you know, you're like, hey, why don't you go try swimming in a lake? You're so drunk. It's like, what I'm trying to say <laughs> is. That, that it's so normalized, this kind of caretaking insanity is so normalized. We've all been there. We've all, who hasn't dealt with a drunk ass friend? You got to take care of them. And like, it's so normalized for no reason. If it was any other drug, you'd be like, yeah, man, that's fucked up. You got to stop hanging out with those people. He was on, right, right, right. he was on heroin about to overdose. No, no, no. Right. You'd be like, that's crazy. He was coked out of his mind. Like, yeah. You'd be like. Yeah, he took PCP and was, you know, ripping off his eyeballs. Like, it's just like, 
you are in an insane place. Like you abuse a drug to an insane level. So like, you know, is she responsible to caretake for you? Yeah. But like the fact that you woke up that morning and were like, oh, it's messed up what she, no, it's messed up what you did. This is about you and your problem. Not her. You're lucky right. she was there. That's what I'm saying. No, facts. Facts. Damn, Danny. Exit the alcohol matrix, people. Come with me to sobriety town where we eat cookies every day and run. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> we do love the cookies. We do love the cookies. All right, guys, we got a juicy app for you today. Our second story of the day. What is it? I can't find the title, people. I can't find the title. ATA for telling my sister with cancer that bad things happen to bad people. But first, it's AITA for saying that my kids are not my quote unquote greatest accomplishment and that I resent the assumption they are. I love my kids, but they're not my everything. I had a whole life before. I ran marathons, climbed mountains, wrote a novel, and did moderately successful in the aughts. I have an MFA in creative writing. The aughts. Sorry. Well, it said zero zeros, but that's how I say that. Chatting with some folks in the hood, we got to talking about our greatest accomplishments. When it came to me, Tom said, oh, well, we know what your greatest accomplishment is. Obviously, you have three beautiful, well-behaved children. I was honestly shocked. I said, no, that's not my greatest accomplishment. He looked just as shocked. And I said, what my greatest accomplishment is. And then said, and by the way, I resent the assumption that having kids is my greatest accomplishment. You have kids. Why didn't you say that? He said how he didn't birth the kids and how that's a miracle of life and all that gag me shit. Oh, my God. I just rolled my eyes and said, let's not boil women down to their biological functions. Okay. Jen, who has kids, chimed in and said, well, my kids are my greatest accomplishment. I can't imagine thinking anything else. Tom. Okay, Jen. Tom looked super smug. Others, including other moms, chimed in. All the moms agreed their kids were their greatest accomplishment. I kind of stewed about it. After that, the woman who chimed in sent me a message asking me if I needed to talk to someone and asked if I was depressed because my statement was worrisome. She ended up reaching out to my husband to encourage me to get help because it seems I'm unhappy being a mom and that puts my kids at risk. Am I really the asshole here for thinking being a mom isn't the end all be all of my life? Like WTF. What the hell is wrong with these people? My gosh, I, I mean, again, juicy. like, we don't have kids, hard to relate, blah, blah, blah. Um, wow. Very juicy. I mean, is it? Like, these people kind of just seem like they're, okay, I'm going to sound a little bit tinfoily, but, like, it just sounds like they've been very conditioned to, like, accepting the messaging that society has given us, and, like, the fact that OP has not done that is not bad. Being like, yeah, I hate my kids is one thing. Yeah, I think it's okay to say. But I think, like, because I just think about, like, you know, if I have kids one day, like, I don't know, is that going to be my greatest accomplishment? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it depends how they turn out, I suppose. But, like, there's also just other things that I've objectively accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I think, I think at the lowest layer here, there's some sexism here. Big time. But I think there's also a deeper philosophical question, which is, you know, is raising a kid an accomplishment? It's interesting because you started off with hate. Do you hate your kids? Well, I don't really give a fuck if you hate your kids. You're allowed to hate your kid. I don't care if you hate your kid. You just got to take care of your kid. So if you hate the motherfucker, well, that's on you. Sorry. But well, yeah, I just meant she didn't say that she hated the kid. <laughs> no, she no, just no, said no, that no. they weren't there, her, her accomplishment. Well, I, I guess that's kind of what I'm going to, though, is like, well, yeah, maybe I honestly think it might be a bigger accomplishment if you do hate your kid. If you're like, I hate this motherfucker, but you take really good care of him. That's even harder. I got mad props for someone who raises a that's shitty. That's true. That's true. A shitty I ass mean, I kid. I guess the thing is like. Raising kids who are also, like, not complete, like, I don't know, leeches on society and just, like, scumbags is actually, it is a big accomplishment because it's an ongoing accomplishment. Like, you, sure. just, you don't ever stop parenting them. So, it, it, like, it is a huge accomplishment to raise kids who, like, are decent people. Yeah, I mean, look, I think this kind of folds back into a conversation we've had and and conversations I've had about like, I mean, how we define our accomplishments is very related to how we define ourselves and our lives and our values. If you're a stay at home mom or a stay at home dad, and that's what you define as as your life, I think that's fine. If that is your greatest accomplishment, I do think it could be a little toxic. I, I think that there's a known kind of thing of like, look, when you got a baby, that takes all your time and energy but like 
there is such a thing as an overbearing parent. You know what I mean? So that's the only kind of yeah, danger of, of over identifying with your children. Uh, but I don't, I don't really have a problem with the philosophy of viewing it as an accomplishment, as long as, you know, you actually were good and you weren't like totally like smothering your kids. Yeah, totally. But I also think thinking something else is your greatest accomplishment is not problematic. No, these I, people's reaction seems very like outsized. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. I mean, and also I would, I would think it's very offensive and I, I don't even know where you would come up with that to assume that a woman's answer would be raising her kids. I mean, I wouldn't, I'd be like, <clears throat> I just, I wouldn't. I mean, yeah, it's just, hmm. I would, I mean, I would think raising a kid, raising your kids would be like a challenge while you were doing something else. Like you're like, well, I ran a marathon while I had a three-year-old. I'm like, oh my God. But I mean, look, I think it is an accomplishment. It's obviously a massive challenge. It's probably the most complicated, difficult thing you can do. It's certainly the longest. Well, what else takes yeah, 18 years? It's like an overarching. A mortgage. Like a long-term thing. Nothing yeah, else takes mortgage. as long as a kid. It takes forever. And then they're not done. It's not like they're 18 and you don't have to talk to them anymore. It's like right. it's forever with these kids. It never ends. It never ends. <laughs> I'm really into this. I want to meet the mom who's like, yeah, I fucking hate my kid. But I raise the shit out of him. He loves me, but <laughs> I just can't stand it. That's really funny. That, to me. that person would have to be like a very <laughs> amazing actress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to like live with someone day in, day out, openly yeah. or like secretly disdain them and not right, have them pick up right, on it. Right. Chubby Wench writes, NTA, you are spot on. These women are defining themselves by a biological function. In theory, it's the raising of those offspring that would count more and include smug face Tom if he has kids. Well, yeah, I mean, isn't that what they mean? Raising the kids? Isn't that what they said, though? Yes, they're being they're being a literalist. What did they say? I, I hate when people do this. This is like Ben Shapiro yeah. bullshit. What did, what did they say? <laughs> having, well, having kids. Yeah, well, that's what they mean, having. It's like, yeah, we, I mean, the thing Shut is, up. yeah, in this country, our maternal mortality rate is shockingly high, but I do think they don't just mean, like, surviving birth. Having, And I think yes. we all know that. Like, having a dog it doesn't mean that you birth the animal. It means you have a dog. This is stupid. Yeah, I, hate, I hate really literal, like, gotcha kind of shit like that. It's like, shut up. Theory of the universe. Yeah, that's so annoying. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> Theory of the universe, NTA, if anything, it sounds like they might be a little bitter over the fact that you have accomplished so much. That's fair, I suppose. It does sound like there's some bitterness or, like, uh, projection, I guess. Politely hostile. This is interesting. Everyone sucks Ooh. here. The neighbor sounds stuffy, but OP sounds way too defensive and argumentative. She could have just calmly said she doesn't see it that way. So what can we indict her for? What did she really say? I resent. Can you go back and read it to me again? She says, I resent the assumption that having kids is my greatest accomplishment. That's a little heavy. I mean, she kind of went like... Well, the thing is, they went in on her, but, like, she could have just been like, I don't see it that way. But then to be like, and you know what? I even resent the implication that you, it's like, okay, you didn't need to necessarily take it into a debate, but you did. Yeah, but Tom is kind of being a fuck ass. Why is he asking this fucking question? <laughs> yeah. Why is he asking this question if he's going, oh, well, we know what your greatest accomplishment is. Well, if you know Tom, you smug little fuck, then why are you asking? Because you don't really want to know. He's a dick. you dick. He's Fuck a dick. Tom. No, I don't have any qualms with OP. I mean, my only qualm with them is they ran a marathon, but I can't even run the I hate runners because I just admitted <laughs> I'm a runner. So You are one now. I am one now. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it is a resent. I, look, I think it's fair for OP to resent the assumption. It's like... If a woman wants it to be it her is. accomplishment or a man, then fuck it. That's fine. That's what their thing is. That's what they identify as good for them. But to assume it is sexist. It absolutely is. Yeah, I mean, 100%. AITA for saying that my kids are not my greatest accomplishment and that I resent the assumption that they are. We agree. Not the asshole. And Tom is. Fuck Tom. Yeah, fuck Tom. <laughs> AITA for telling my sister with cancer that quote bad things happen to bad people. Wow, OP, how are we gonna how are we gonna get you out of this? Uh, <laughs> Me, twenty seven M, and my sister Ava, thirty one. Wow, we've never had an Ava before. Have never. That's a good fake name. That's a good fake or a real name. name. Yeah, that's the name of the robot in uh, Ex Machina. Have never gotten along for a number of reasons. So OP doesn't get along with his sister by older sister by four years. I was adopted at age eight. And she still only addresses our parents as her parents. 
as she calls me a family friend, not her brother, when introducing me to people. Wow, OP has already dug themselves out of a hole because that is fucking horrible. I was overweight <laughs> for most of my childhood, and she used to bully me over it a lot. I have a stereotypically girl name. I was named after my birth mom for the sake of this post. Think Kelly or Anna. Something boring and basic, but unmistakably girly. She continues to this day to bully me about it. She outed me as gay to her entire high school in the school paper. What the fuck? Okay, that ring's fake, but whatever. She says I ruined her life because I encouraged her parents to foster our other two siblings. She once locked me out of the house for three days while my parents were out of town. I was 13 and had to stay at the neighbor's house because she wouldn't open the door even when my parents called okay. and told her to. Like, I've heard enough. There are many more examples for her being awful, but these ones came to mind first. Last week, Ava called me, my siblings, and my parents and asked us to come over for lunch. Me and my sibs had to stop and pick up food on the way over to her house. She won't cook for us, only for our parents. What the fuck is Ava's problem? What the fuck? What the fuck is Ava's problem? <laughs> what is that about? What the fuck That's policy is this? So we drove. That's insane. Well, we got there. I'm sorry, our, but it is. <laughs> this is crazy. Well, we got there. Our parents are already there in the kitchen crying. I asked what happened and Ava told us, but Ava told us that she had cancer and that she wanted, I asked what happened and Ava told us that she had cancer and she wanted our support. I said, I'm sorry about that because I really did. Our support? Here, have a cookie. Oh, wait, I only baked some for mom and dad. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know what else to say. Ava and my parents got upset and we all basically got into a screaming match. I told her that she really shouldn't be surprised that karma finally found her. <laughs> Holy Whoa. fuck. Holy fuck, that's brutal. Ava asked what I meant. I told her that bad things happen to bad people. She started sobbing and I walked right out the front door. <laughs> Holy shit. My parents have been calling me to say that I was an asshole. My siblings are mad that I drove away without them. <laughs> Drove away they without them. them. Oh god! But they agree that Ava, Ava is awful. I'm starting to feel kind of bad because I know how horrible cancer is. I know that no one deserves to go through that. A I T A. Holy oh shit! Oh my god, dude! I mean, it, like she's just about as terrible as you can make her without like having her abuse animals or murder anyone. I mean. Like, come on. The thing is, she's so horrible and from such a young age that it's like, right. it's almost like it's not about her. I'm like, what's with these parents? What's going on? Like something else is. I mean, that's true. And what's with only cooking for the parents? How are you going to invite someone over and only cook for some of the people? I'm just not going to get over that detail. That's beyond crazy. I mean, we're talking about a 12 year old girl and then she's calling her eight year old adoptive brother, a family friend. I mean, this is a level of brutality that is just like insane. It's insane. It's like pathological. And also like, how can you, how can you demand support from someone that you've never given anything to ever? First of all, it's like, why do you even want their support? Because you clearly, like, hate them with every fiber of your being. What the fuck is that about? Right. I don't, I, well, I don't, I don't even know. See, I don't know. I think she's got, like, serious issues. I mean, honestly. Yeah, no shit. I'm starting to lay it on the parents. I don't know what the parents did here. There, this is a thing, yeah, though. I I've, mean, I've heard of, like, super toxic families that have foster kids and stuff. And it's it's like, it can, because it, can be it can be a token thing. You know, because it's like kind of a status symbol in, in certain communities. Be like, yeah, I got foster kids. Having a foster kid is a status symbol? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. What? Yes, ma'am. Wait. Yes, because people will be like, yeah, you know, we we adopted him. You know, we're good people. It's like it's like that kind of vibe. Well, I see people doing it for, in like a very white savior -y way. That's I what I mean. Like That's what I mean. I get what you, okay, I wouldn't call that, like, a status symbol, well, but, no, like, I see what you mean. A Maserati, it's not, but it is some kind of vying, jockeying for position of a sort. It's like a virtue signaling, like, there we go. white savior -y thing. I see virtue that. Virtue signal makes more sense than status symbol, but yes, 100%. You're, you're, on, my, you're on my wavelength here. So I, I'm wondering if maybe this wasn't just a super tox family. I mean, obviously it is. I, is anyone having a good time here? Or maybe just Ava's just straight up evil, like the robot and X machina i don't know like the kids that i'm afraid i'm gonna have danny see it happens oh oh my god i hope you're one of those people who have a kid that you hate but you have to raise them well anyway <laughs> no why would you wish that upon me <laughs> I guess it'll, it'll make me laugh really hard if 
<laughs> That's all you talk about. I hate him. I hate my baby. My baby hates true crime. <laughs> he, just, he doesn't like it. He doesn't share. My baby. My baby. God, my baby feels fear. Can you imagine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whisper M writes, well, I can see why you wanted to say that. YTA, cancer doesn't discriminate and her karma didn't give her cancer. You both have a lot of growing up to do. Whisper, though, really? You're not going to give you're not going to give Ava an ESH? Anti-ESH, OP's sister is a literal villain, but bad things happen to everybody. Cancer isn't a way for the universe to punish shitty people and to characterize it that way is pretty disrespectful. Oh, well, I mean, I think OP just hates... I definitely agree, but, like, sometimes the shoe, like, fits. Well, yeah, but there was a context. It wasn't but, like he went into a cancer ward. It was like, bad things happen to everybody. Yeah, yeah it's right, like, exactly. He was, like, plenty of innocent, amazing people get cancer. Right. But... This person also is a cartoon villain. As LEP writes, ESH, there's a time and place to call someone out on their behavior, and when they tell you they have cancer is definitely not it. Damn, you guys are nicer people than me. Like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be <laughs> able to hold that shit in. It's like a little weird. If I had endured that, but whatever. Well, why did OP wait for this moment? Or why even show up? Right, I I got that's valid. Uh, yeah, right. That's valid. Like, come on, I can't just give OP a yeah, pass. Yeah, I can see it being like a sort of like um, I want to say codependent, but not in the way that you usually mean it. Huh. Where it's just like it's sort of they're both sort of mutually seeking out this like toxic relationship. So I sort of think that you kind of got it when you said like. Why is she seeking out his support? Because she's so toxic and all over the place. And that's why he had this reaction where it was like, oh, you want something from me now? Well, how about fuck you? True, true, true. Because it was like the only place where he could really own, like throw in an own. I think that's kind of what he was looking for. Kathleen H going for NTA. Sister spent literally decades tormenting OP, but that's all supposed to go by the wayside because she's ill. And OP's reaction to the news was perfectly reasonable. I'm sorry about that. Okay, yeah, so wait, let's go back into the moment. Yeah, what is the reaction that was said? OP, they go over for lunch. They got to pick up the food on the way to her house, <laughs> even though... <laughs> that is the most insane thing. I'm about to tell you I have cancer, but by the way, you have to pick up food for yourself. That's so crazy. So then... Unreal. OP asks what happens, because the parents are already crying. Ava says she had cancer and she wanted our support. OP says, I'm, I'm sorry about that, because I didn't know what else to say. Yeah, what else do you say? Ava and my parents got upset, and we all basically got into a screaming match. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know that. Yeah, we can't know what was said, but it's just like, what are you going to say besides I'm sorry? What are you supposed to say? That didn't seem like a crazy thing to say. I don't know if I trust OP's account of what happened. Zanita R., she invited you over to her house for lunch, but you had to bring your own food, then wanted sympathy. No, honey, that's not how life works. TBH, that's kind of fair. Honestly, like, yeah. part of me, like, does want to be, like, she's kind of being an asshole, like, from the outset. Like, she's kind of being an asshole in this interaction, even. Like, she's, yeah, she's kind of... even by setting up this meeting this way. I, like, part of me does want to go ESH, because, like, OP did go nuclear, but I'm, like... She, this was like just yet another fucking slight after a lifetime of well beyond slights. It's like... I don't know. I don't know if I can ESH this. It's a very soft ESH if so. A Ava is a monster. I know what you mean. She's a monster. It's interesting because we're only getting like OP's narrative. So I am so interested to see what the sister side would be because I can't imagine. I mean, that's just life, right? Like, I just can't imagine that OP is never wrong to the sister in any way. So it's possible that they're like both in their own little silos thinking the other person is terrible. That said, I'm only getting one person's account here. And like, it's hard for me not to side with that person. Right. I mean, I don't know if we know anything else about the sister. She's done a lot of mean things. She's done a lot of mean things. So I think we agree on this one. ATA for telling my sister with cancer that bad things happen to bad people. Not the asshole, and she is. I feel comfortable saying that. I do, too. I mean, the fact that she didn't even make lunch, or, like, if she had made lunch for no <laughs> one, that would have been fine. That's kind of the thing. Like, the, the way this whole interaction was set up is just bonkers to me. She's always sliding. And then to, like, nitpick the person's condolences when you, like, treated like shit from the very outset of this whole day is just, what the hell? 
Oh yeah, that's just all she does. She just takes shots at people. It's not like she like invited her over to like reconcile or was like, I know we have a bad relationship, but I want to tell you. And right away, OP was like, well, serves you right. Blah, blah, blah. Right, right. Yeah, it's ridiculous. All right, guys, we're going to wrap oh up on a listener submission here. AATA for offering cat food to my date. I, 29M, met a nice girl, 30F, on a dating app. Already, that's a lie. Just kidding. We talked for a week wow. or so. <laughs> Jaded alert. We talked for. Danny has <laughs> been on like two months of bad dates and is already jaded. <laughs> we talked for a week or so and really hit it off. After a nice FaceTime, we decided we'd like to meet up in person. I got my COVID test. She got hers. We both came back neg- negative and we were ready to roll. The date went well and she ended up spending the night. We're waking up the next morning around nine by meowing. My cat Molly wants to be fed. I get up and get her bowl to fill it up with cat food. While I do this, Molly usually stands at my feet, eagerly awaiting her food. As I'm scooping her food into her bowl, I look down at her and say in that exaggerated voice, we all used to speak speak to our pets, Mmm, Molly, this looks so good. I can see why you're getting excited for this. It looks delicious. I say stupid little variations of this all the time when I'm feeding the cat, even when I'm alone. It just makes me laugh. Anyways, I set her food down for her to eat and go back into my room. The date goes, is she okay? And I say, yeah, she's okay. She she just needed some food. Then I say, in what I thought was an obvious joking voice, I think I'm going to pour myself a bowl too. Do you want any? She just sort of looks at me and goes, no. I say, okay, I won't have any either. We hung out a little more that morning, and eventually she had to go. I texted her later that night, and I told her I had a really good time and asked if she wanted to go out again. She told me that she had a good time, but that me asking her if she wanted to eat cat food really weirded her out. I'm not sure if she is weirded out because she thinks I actually eat cat food or because it was a weird joke. So I guess no second date. If she's just not into me, that's fine. But if she is really upset about the cat thing, I have to admit I'm a little confused. It was clearly a joke, and I don't think this woman actually believes I'm chowing down cans of fancy feast every night. But if it's an asshole joke to make, I'd like to know so I don't do something like that again, AITA. Oh, no. I mean, we just don't know his delivery. I mean, I, I think this is a clean joke. I can I can think of a way this... I like the joke, too. But then when he was like, all right, I guess I won't have any either, like, dejectedly, I'm kind of like, <gasps> maybe she was like, wait, what? And then his response, instead of just, you know, being like, oh, yeah, I was joking. Like, he sort of doubled down on the joke, which was funny. So maybe that caused her to be like, wait, I guess he was serious. She's, she's young Sarah. She, this girl's fucking stupid. Then she's either fucking stupid or she has no sense of humor. There's something wrong with this girl. The OP is dodging a bullet. The way this joke could have been offensive. This would have been, no, I don't think it's offensive, but I think she could have like, here's there's, there's a key to how OP delivered this joke. If he had said, okay, yeah, the cat just needed my food. Then I said, in what I thought was an obvious joking voice, do you want any? That would have been more offensive because then it's kind of saying like, you're an animal, especially if it was a dog. Uh, so wait, what was said? He said, I think I'm going to pour myself some. Do you want any? Oh. So it was just a weird, whimsical joke. And she is a humorless, awful person. She would have been okay. She's not awful. She's awful. Relax. She's awful. No, no. She's insufferable. Trust me, this girl is no fun. She is no fun. Anybody who acts this way is no fun. They take everything super seriously. They're the kind of person who says that kind of bullshit of like, "Oh, you have a kid." You mean literally having a kid? It's that kind of vibe where it's like, okay, yes, I guess everything is literal in your little world. This girl is. This girl sucks. <laughs> I, I'm doubling down on this shit, Sarah. <laughs> It was maybe a bad joke, fine, but the notion that she would bring it up again, I'd be like, are you seriously on about this joke about eating the cat food, lady? I mean, why didn't he just say, like, it was a joke? She told me she had a good time, but that me asking her if she wanted to eat cat food really weirded her out? And then you'd be like, oh, my bad, it was a joke. I guess you're right. That could have been more conversation there. Yeah, (laughs) like, I mean... I kind of want to say no assholes here because it it feels like a bullet dodge on both ends. Like if she really thought this guy eats cat food, that's one thing. If he like was going to drop it so easily without just a simple, 
You know I was joking, right? Mm, okay, all right. Like, you're bringing me on board. Kind of like, all right, man. All right. Because I don't know. I just feel like, especially on dates, like you're nervous and you don't want to like. Okay, let's role play this. I want to try to play it really awkwardly. Because see, the thing is, I would kill the delivery, so maybe he didn't. All right, so ask me if the cat's out. Okay. Yeah, but I'm really awkward, so I'd be like, oh, is he serious? And then you don't want to like. Let's hear. Let's role play. Ask me, is she okay? Referring to the cat Molly, and we're just gonna play this out. Okay. Is. Is she okay? Oh yeah, she's okay. She uh, she just needed some food. Um, I I think I'm gonna pour myself a bowl too. Do you uh, want any? Uh, I'm good. Okay, I won't have any either. Okay, I can I can see how this would play. Like, I think if you're both kind of nervous and mm, you don't want to like yeah. assume anyone's joking, like. I don't know. We've watched enough sitcoms to like see that happen when you assume someone's joking and they're not joking. Then you look like a huge asshole. You know what I see it as, too? It's not about the cat food. It's about like not having a strong enough sense of the interaction. Like nervousness is kind of on it. Yeah, because you don't know the vibes. But yeah, like if a girl didn't laugh at my joke, I would be like, that was a joke. I mean, I would also be like, you're probably this probably isn't going to work because you're not getting an obvious joke. You would also say like, well, I bombed. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Like you would acknowledge that the joke didn't fly. Like you're right. I say that all the time. I'm just like, ah, they can't all be hits, you know? (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Not acknowledging it is kind of inept. And then it, it comes up again. She says it weird her out and does he just like let that glaze over why wouldn't he it's just instead of being like all right i guess i'm not seeing you again instead of just being like okay i was joking it was a joke i would also just not want someone to like go around the city thinking that i eat cat food like i'd want to straighten that out it's true it's almost like he was trying too hard to impress her or he was too nervous or something and that might be what actually turned her off it's not really about the joke that uh, or like maybe his delivery is just really dry and he doesn't know it and he thinks it's an obviously exaggerated voice but like right right my obviously exaggerated voice is like most people with a modicum of emotion so i think you're right i i, I will retract my statements about this girl being no Woo. fun other people did see it that way though casey said sounds like you dodged a bullet no sense of humor equals no fun but the thing is he didn't say he actually said that he had a good time too you know so maybe this was just like a miss so this person can't be co- totally joyless that's true that's true <laughs> taylor r nta some people have a hard time telling jokes apart from normal conversation so i wouldn't assume it was obvious sounds like a misunderstanding sheena a nta yeah. and why can't funny shit happen on my dates instead i got dudes telling me they just got released for manslaughter <laughs> Oh what my God! Fuck? Come on the pod, come on the true what crime the podcast. <laughs> so, hey, Whoa. this has been really good. Oh my God! Yeah, I had so much fun tonight. Cool. Well, I hope I see. Hey, by the way, I forgot to tell you. Um, I just killed a motherfucker. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just totally killed a guy. It was a big oopsie. Oopie. <laughs> like, well, how did I can't how believe that. that go down? The other thing is too, like, if they had cleared this up, then they could have laughed about it. And then it could have just been like a joke between That's them. what I mean. It was actually not the misfire of the joke. It was the lack of like settling the interaction that was so bizarre. Yeah. It's like you left it hanging on a weird note. OP, I love you. Look, we've all bombed. Some, you didn't own the bomb and it wasn't your fault you bombed. <laughs> she kind of doesn't have a great sense of humor, but like it was a weird vibe you created. You're not an asshole. Uh, and probably this girl like probably isn't that fun if she didn't get this joke because it was a pretty it was a solid joke. It was an innocent joke. Like, I liked it. I liked it. it yeah, I like the joke. I have no I like qualms the joke. about the joke. I like you, OP. But I think on the matter of AITA for offering cat food to my date, this is a no assholes here. I agree. Guys, please rate, review, and subscribe. We really appreciate that shit. Join us on patreon.com slash A-I-T-A-P-O-D. We'd love for you to join. We actually hit 50 patrons again. We had 50, and then we lost a couple, and then we're back up to 50. Woo! So, yeah, we're happy about it. We're doing stuff. We're doing the happy hour. Well, once you've listened to this, it's already happened, but we might do it again. Anyway, reach out, DM. You know it. We love you. We'll see you next Monday morning. We sure will.